all the answers. But has anyone ever just held on till the storm was over? It's not because I'm good. It's not because I'm great. It's not because I'm strong. I just held on. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, we're going to begin reading in verse number 13. Verse number 13. If you're there, if you would, stand for the reading of God's Word. Amen. The Bible says in verse 13, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, that means kill, the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit, turn to your neighbor and say, led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received a spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Say, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Amen. I had a few of you say it like you believe it. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also may be also glorified together. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the anointing and the weight that it carries. And we ask that your word go forth on that anointing and destroy and break yokes in Jesus' name. And the church says... Amen. You may be seated tonight. Amen. Many of you may know that I enjoy sports. I very much enjoy sports. I played sports. Always have enjoyed it. But if I begin to name some names, some of you may not. Some of the ladies in this house may not. Some of the men may even may not know these names, but some of you will know these names immediately. Names like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is a name that many that love the game of basketball would know well. Six-time champion, multiple times he won the most valuable player of the NBA. He is... In the top four, I believe, of the all-time scoring list. He, he won accolade after accolade. And many people would say that Michael Jordan was born to play basketball. It just came to him naturally. Many of you, especially in, in this state, would know the name of Peyton Manning. I can't talk about Tom Brady. I, didn't, I can't do that. Uh, but... You could mention the name of Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning was someone that, again, won a couple Super Bowls, a couple championships, multiple Most Valuable Player of the Year awards. There's a statue of him that sits outside of Lucas Oil Stadium. He's a man that many people would say was born to play football. Some of you... I know I'm going to get an amen from the sound booth from Cameron on this, but some of you may know the name of Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey Jr. He was a phenomenal baseball player. Some would say that, many would say that he had the perfect swing, that it was the most 
fluid and natural looking swing ever seen in the game of baseball. He's a Hall of Famer. He is someone that has won MVPs and Silver Sluggers and Golden Gloves. He was someone that was good in every facet of the game. He could hit. He could hit home runs. He could, he could steal bases. He could play the field. He was good at all aspects of the game. And many people would say that Ken Griffey Jr. was born to play baseball. I could go on and on and on about many athletes, male and female alike, and how they've won accolades and how some of these, these men that I've mentioned to you, many people will tell you that they changed the games that they played forever. The way that Michael Jordan was so competitive and the way that he carried himself, people would say that he changed the game of basketball. The way that Peyton Manning digests film and learned about his opponents, many people says he changed the position of quarterback in the game of football forever. King Griffey Jr. is someone that says, his, again, his swing was so perfect and fluid that many people said the way that he played the game changed the game forever. Again, many people would say that they were born to play the sports that they play. Many people, in fact, in many different sports... You can say the same. People can say Serena Williams in tennis, Arnold Palmer in golf, or Tiger Woods in golf, or many of those names you would know. But here's the fact. These men, these women may have changed their respective sports forever, but they never made an impact on the soul of mankind. Hear me. They never saved anyone. They've never laid hands on the sick and seen them healed They've never tore down demonic strongholds. They've never accomplished things in a spiritual realm. You can say, what are you getting at, preacher? What are you, where are you going with this? Hear me. These athletes inherited attributes from their parents. Whether you like it or not, you received attributes from your parents. My father's tall. So I'm tall. My father's big. So I struggle with being big, all right? I have, I have these things from my father. I have uh, the personality of my mother. My mother didn't know a stranger. She's super outgoing, super, she's just, just crazy. She's a little out there. And I'm, I'm a little bit like that, or a lot a bit like that for some of you. But I, I, I want you to understand that whether you, you desire it or not, that there are things ingrained in you genetically that you are given from your parents. They're given to you from birth. So stay with me, stay with me. We're going somewhere. Just like these athletes, two of these athletes that I mentioned, their fathers were athletes before them. King Griffey Jr., his father was a phenomenal baseball player before him. And Peyton Manning, his father Archie, was a, an excellent football player before him. They, they inherited these skills. And, and people, when they would say, you know, it was like they were born to play the game, Jeremy, it was because they made it look easy. It just came naturally to them. They made the game look so intriguing and interesting. And there was just these skills that normal people did not have, but... They would combine those skills with a work ethic and they would turn it into something that many people would call great. But here is what our portion of scripture that we read tonight says that for as many that are led of the Spirit, they are the sons of God. That's us. If you're saved tonight, the Bible says in verse 13, I, I didn't pick up in verse 13, but that we are to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Listen, my flesh desires things that I should not desire. My flesh wants to go to bed sometimes when I need to get into the Word, okay? We, we talk about those things. But the Bible says again in verse 14 that if we are led of the Spirit of God, then we are sons of God. Verse 15, if we, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again. Flesh is bondage. Thanks to Adam and Eve and their sin, through them, sin entered into the world. So our flesh is bondage. Hear me. Our flesh is bondage. He says, you have not received a, 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 a spirit again of bondage, 
But you have received through Christ, he's talking here, has received, we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we can cry, Abba, Father. Turn to your neighbor and say, what he's saying is, we've been born again. We have been born again. Jesus says it this way to Zach, or not to Zacchaeus, but Nicodemus. He says in John 3, in verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Paul says it this way, describing what it's like to be born again in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. So therefore, we no longer walk after the flesh, but we have been given this spirit of adoption through the grace and through the love and through the power of Jesus and His sacrifice and His resurrection. And we've been adopted by our Heavenly Father. Okay? I know there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of setup here. So there are things that we got naturally and that we've learned from our natural parents. There are also things that we get and obtain through our Heavenly Father, attributes that we gain from our Heavenly Father. And just like how many ever wanted to be their dad when they grew up? How many ever wanted to be their mom when they grew up? I wanted to be like my, I can remember putting on a little bow tie and acting like a preacher, being six and seven years old because I, I, I wanted to be like my daddy. I never thought I would be like my daddy. But I, 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 at that time in my life, I wanted to be like my father. And there's things that my parents taught me. Has your parents taught you anything? Someone raise your hand. Give, give me some class participation tonight. Your parents ever taught you anything? I pray to God they've taught you something. But just like they've taught you things and just like they've given you attributes genetically and naturally, when we become born again and we are given a heavenly father and we enter into his grace and his love and his mercy through Christ, we are also given the same charge. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 13, and he's, he's, Peter's talking to the believer here. He says, Wherefore, gird up thy loins, or gird up the loins of your mind, and be sober, and hope to at the end for grace that it, that it is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, catch what he says here, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorance. He's saying, listen, don't, don't conform. That word is, uh, can be translated in the Greek to conform. Do not conform to who you used to be. Okay, this is all my introduction. Don't be conformed to who you used to be. And your old lust and your old ignorance when you lived in sin and when you weren't a, 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 a son and daughter of Christ. But he says in verse 15, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. So what he's saying here is just as we would fashion ourselves genetically and learned behavior from our parents we are to do with Christ as well. I will tell you there are things that I used to do, but because of Christ, I no longer do. There are things that were the old jade, but because of Christ, the new jade would never do those things. There are things that I said. There are things that I watched. There are things that I listened to. There are people that I hung around with as the old me, but because of my new heritage, my new lineage, and me desiring to please my Father, my Heavenly Father, I have changed to be more like Him. Listen, it's still a, walk in, a work in progress, but I want you to understand something uh, that we need to fashion ourselves like Christ and there may be talents uh, that we receive from our earthly parents. There are, there are skills uh, that you may have where it's like, man, you, you, you know, uh, you working on a car that looks so naturally to you. you. You working at your job, it becomes natural to you. You working at the bank, whatever it may be, it may seem natural. And, and what you may think in your natural mind is you are born to do this. We all have trades. We all have to make a living. We all have 
to do something. But I want you to know that the same thing is true spiritually. That you were born to do something for God just as much as you were born to do something to make a living naturally. Hear me, in this life, uh, you may say, I could say, well, Jade was just born to be an electrician. That's my trade. That's what I do. Uh, that, that's what I've done ever since uh, high school. Uh, that's what I've been involved in. Uh, but uh, hear me tonight uh, because I am born again uh, as Jesus said through Paul, uh, I am bought with a price. I am not my own. Uh, I I belong to another which is Christ. Uh, there are things that he has planned and purpose for my life as well. The Bible tells us that he told Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah twice in Jeremiah's book uh, that but while he was in his mother's womb, uh, he knew him. Uh, he had plans for him uh, and he had a design for him to be a prophet uh, to the nation of Israel. Okay, where are we going with all this? Uh, Here's what I'm here to tell you tonight. That was my introduction. I know that was long. It was slow. Uh, but I hope you're not bored. And I hope I still have your attention. Uh, because here's what I've come to do tonight. Because I had something totally typed out. Uh, I had worked hours on a message. And at, I, I was on lunch break. And I began to drive home. And, and my Bluetooth is connected. Oh, my phone is connected to my work truck. Uh, it, it's on shuffle. And all of a sudden this song came on. Uh, and the Lord just began to deal with me uh, on, on on this topic, uh, I was born for this. I was born for this. You say, "What? Well, okay, where you go? I was born for this. Uh, hear me tonight. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 uh, and verse 10, uh, Finally, my, my brethren, uh, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, put on the whole armor of God uh, that ye may be able to stand uh, against the wiles of the devil. Verse number 12, catch this. Uh, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities and against powers and against rulers of darkness of this world uh, and against spiritual wickedness and high places. What does this have to do with being born for this? I want you to know that we it doesn't take long for you to turn on the news and realize that this world is fallen, that this world is wicked. I dare say, I don't think you can make a better case than you can now, that maybe our world is more wicked than it's ever been. That our, 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 our children are being more polluted and being exposed to more things than we ever thought thought imaginable. Uh, there are times, uh, and I believe we're in a time now, we've experienced uh, God moving in, in our nation in the last few months, uh, but the enemy has come in uh, and he's tried to take you back to where you were uh, and keep you from moving forward. Uh, he's tried to steal your joy. Uh, he's tried to steal your peace. Uh, he's tried to steal the wholeness uh, or the healing that God's given you. He, he's tried to take and take and take from you. Uh, and many of you in this house uh, feel like you are just overwhelmed, uh, like you just can't take it anymore. Like, God, how am I going to make it to one more service? Uh, or many of you may feel, how am I going to make it through another day? Uh, here's what I've come to tell you tonight. Uh, as Mordecai uh, told Esther, uh, perhaps you have come into the kingdom uh, for such a time as this. Uh, you can ask yourself, why was I born now? Uh, why in this time uh, with all this wickedness? I want you to know that you were born again and bought by the blood of Jesus. You were born for this time. You were born for this season. And it doesn't matter what hell throws at you. You were born. You were equipped. You were anointed. You were empowered to deal with it. You say, you don't know what's going on in my family. I don't know what's going on in your family. But if you would just get in contact with your heavenly father, you would realize Anything that hell throws at me will have to leave from me. We'll have to do them. Oh, you better hear me tonight. It's Wednesday night and I feel like preaching. I feel the Holy Ghost of God in this house because here's the fact of the matter. You may feel anxious. You may feel depression. You may feel all these things coming at you, but you were born. You were born into the kingdom to tear down strongholds. Why? For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You were born for this. 
People say we're in the last days. Guess what? You were born for this. You've come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Oh, you don't know what's going on in my body. You were born to deal with what's going on in your body. Hey, listen, it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. He says here, Paul, in Ephesians 6, he says, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might, not your might. Hear me tonight. There's things that you've been fighting all on your own, but if you would get in contact with the Holy Spirit through prayer, through consecration, through relationship, I want you to know it's not going to be by your might or your power but it's going to be by his might by his power don't try to fight spiritual weapons in the natural you've got to go to your knees you've got to get in your prayer closet you've got to lift your hands you've got to praise you've got to worship because the fact is you were born to face whatever is coming against you You've been given the ability. (laughs) See, the enemy tries to convince you. Uh, Hear me. In this age, I will say, the thing that I encounter the most in ministry, not just with young people, but parents, I'm going to talk to you as well. I encounter this with parents, 50, 60, 40, 30 years old, Insecurity. Hear me. Well, I, I can and I can't. Listen, I, I, I will tell you, you were born for this. Oh, but I can't overcome what's coming at me. No, 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 no. You were born for this. Uh, you, you, Jesus saved you for this. Jesus brought you. Jesus rose so that you could deal with this. Uh, Jesus sent his Holy Spirit uh, so you could run it out of your house, uh, run it out of your marriage, uh, run it out of your family. Uh, hear me tonight. You were born for this. They'll come to the music. I I tell you, it's easy to get lost in your insecurities. And hear me, it's easy to make excuses. Listen, Brother Dan, I've worked with some men that have worked so hard to get out of work, they might as well just sucked it up and worked. So what does that mean? Hear me. There are some believers. You're just running from it because you don't want to deal with it. Hear me tonight. The prophet Elijah spent three and a half years in the wilderness. Caused the drought. Through the unction of the Holy Spirit caused the drought, declared a drought in the land. He spent time in the wilderness. But after three and a half years, he came out of the wilderness. He told Obadiah, he said, you go tell King Ahab, we need to meet at Mount Carmel. Bring his prophets, his false prophets. TJ, what he did is he was saying, it is time for confrontation. How many loves confrontation? I don't think anybody does. I don't enjoy it. I don't like it. I want to avoid it. But I will tell you, when it comes to your spiritual life, if you run now, you will run the rest of your life. Hear me tonight, I'm human. And Darcy, there's days I've prayed, God, I'm done. I'm over this. 
Can I be transparent? There's days I've been like, the young people don't care about what I have to say. Don't care about the house of the Lord. Hey, there's days I've been like, God, how many times, how many times, how many encounters, how many chances do they have to have, Lord? God, can they just not realize who you are? Hey, there's been days, I'll be honest with you. Pastor can tell you, there's day, it's not all, you're not always on the mountain. We, we're human, we know that. I keep coming back to this word. And I keep coming back to what my heavenly father says about me. And I realize that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hear me. I was born into the kingdom. I was born again for this. So what were you brought into the kingdom for? To fill a spot on a pew? I thank God that you're here. No. Is it intercession? Is it to teach? Is it to preach? Is it to evangelize? Is it to be a missionary? Is it, is it to be a prophet? Because whatever it is, the enemy is just trying and trying and trying to prevent you from realizing what I'm telling you tonight, that you were born for this. They can say Michael Jordan was born to pick up a basketball. They can say that Peyton Manning was born to hold a football. They can say that, that King Griffey Jr. was born to swing a bat and carry a glove. But you want to know what? It means nothing. Because what you're born to do through the Spirit of God is to tear down strongholds. I've preached it in this house before, but do you realize that you are the weapon of the Holy Ghost? It is Him working in you and through you. What your family need, what they need is for you to realize that you were born to confront the issues that they're dealing with, to love them, to, to show them grace, to show them mercy, not to judge them. I told our, our Sunday school class a few weeks ago, I wish we loved as much as we judge. It's easy to throw stones, y'all. But for some reason, we have a hard time walking over to the people that we've thrown stones at and said, I'm sorry. Let me help you. But hear me today. What is it? What is it you were born to do? Let me ask you that same question. What is it that prevents you from going after it? Because you want, to, you want to know the God's honest truth from a pastor of this house. We get around and we shake hands and we do life with each other and we talk. And the whole time you think I'm just having a conversation with you. But I want you to know that the Spirit of the Lord is just showing me giftings and calls. And God's just showing me all these, these abilities, these God-given talents, these gifts on the inside of you. And you know what I pray? I, I pray for the strength for you to walk in those things. I, I pray that God would lead and guide your life. I, I pray for those things because here's the deal. Connorsville needs us to realize we were born for this. Hear me. Stand with me across this house. You were born to overcome. 
you were born to conquer. You've been born into this kingdom to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. You say, oh, me? Yes, you. You were born to be an intercessor. You were born to be a teacher. You were born to be a priest. You were born to worship. So that void that some of you may feel in your life where you're like, I just, I feel like my, I'm just grinding it out. I, I'm just, I'm just Samson on the grinding mill. I'm just going around in circles. I, I have no vision. I have no future for my life. I want you to know that's not God's will. And you're, you're trying to fill this void and you're trying to fill, you want to know what will fill the void uh, is getting closer to God and letting him empower you and equip you uh, and show you what you're called to do. What you face at work, you were born to deal with. Can I get an Amen. What you deal with in your family, all the junk that may be going on. I don't know, I, I don't know your extended family situation. I don't know everything. You were born to deal with it. Not to run from it, to deal with it. You were born a child of God. And you know what's crazy about Romans 8? Not only does it say we're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, that's awesome. That we're sons and daughters of God, that's awesome. But in verses previous, it says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. You may be a parent in this house. You say, why, do, why does my children have to deal with this? How do I raise them through this? I can't tell you how many conversations I have with grown men at work contemplating what do they do with their children in school because all the junk going on in so many different school districts. I mean, grown men almost on, to the point of tears. I don't know what to do. I don't know. And the fact is, Jeremy, they were born to deal with it. I was born to raise my daughters in a godly manner in this time. Think of it this way, and I'm going to end with this. Brother Robert Martin, a minister uh, that, I, that preached youth camps when I was growing up. He's at Abundant Life Tabernacle now. He's a lay minister there. but He said something one time, and he said, Do you realize the prophecy of Joel chapter 2? In the last days I will pour out my spirit, saith God. On all flesh, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams. What happened on the day of Pentecost when it was poured out and is happening still today? He said, Can you imagine getting to heaven and Joel, the prophet Joel, is there and he's saying, Were you there? Were you a part? Did you experience the outpouring? Not to knock over this plan. He's going to come up to Elijah and say, were you raptured out? Did you see Jesus return? Did you experience a last day outpouring? See, what does that have to do with anything? What Joel may be asking you is you were born for this time. So what is it that's trying to hinder you? You were born to deal with it. Don't let the enemy have a victory that is not his. Can I talk to my young people? You're born to slay giants. You're born to shepherd sheep. You're born to be anointed. You're born to lead. You're born to conquer. 
and this generation that seems lost and hopeless, you were born to be the light to it. Stop asking why. Why now? Start asking where. Where do I need to go? You were born for this. I'm going to call us to a place of prayer. You need prayer of encouragement. If you just, because I really felt like there were some people just struggling, just dealing with something. Listen, you don't have to deal with the ins and outs. You don't have to deal with the ups and downs. Because my Bible says that God can take us from glory to glory to glory to glory. You were born for this. You were born for the presence. You were born for the power. So if you're in this house tonight, you want prayer of encouragement, you, you, just, you just say, I, I just want to pray. I, I'm going to call us to these altars tonight. I'm going to call us. These altars are open. Come. You may be in this house and say, I don't know spiritually what I've been born into the kingdom to do. We'll pray with you. But hear this, you were born to do something. You're anointed, you're appointed to do something. Lord, everybody, Pastor Ron coming to you again. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that the word was a blessing to you. And today, before we say goodbye, I just want to encourage you. If you have not yet put your faith and trust in the Lord, that this would be a time that you would do so. I'd also say to you, if you're going through a very difficult or trying season, know this, God is faithful. He loves you. We love you. And we just say to you today that He is still able to do exceedingly abundantly what we could ever ask or think. So I speak blessings over you and your family. Thank you for joining us today.